Scripture this morning comes from the second chapter of Matthew, the first 12 verses. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we had seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophets, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summons the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what the, time, what the time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. May God give us the mental capacity to understand his very holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I am nervous. <laughs> Sorry, I always am when I preach. So therefore, I am also dry. <laughs> So it's Epiphany Sunday. We celebrate the Magi coming and worshiping and bringing gifts to the Christ child. They followed a star, these wise men from the east. They were astrologers. They were pagans. They were not Jewish. They didn't know the text, the scriptures that brought, that, uh, brought revelation to God's people. All they knew was this star heralded something special, and they followed it. But when they got all the way to the area, they stopped and they talked with King Herod. See, I find it interesting that these men who study the stars and come so far couldn't quite find exactly where the Christ child was. They had to go, so they looked they look to the current king. I mean, if you were looking for a king, the king of the Jews, wouldn't you maybe start with the current king? So they went to Herod, and Herod didn't know anything about it. So Herod called together the scribes and chief priests of the people, and they all came together, and they are the ones that said that the child was to be born in Bethlehem. And so... They went, continued following the star, and the star evidently rested over the place where the child laid, and they fell down, and they worshipped him, and then they gave him gifts. Now, the Greek word that is used here, you know I always like to throw a little bit of that in, is proskinio, proskinio, and that means to prostrate oneself as if you were bowing down before a king. And so when the wise men uh, appeared there at the house with Mary and the baby, the first thing they did was they knelt down, prostrated themselves, and worshipped. And then they opened their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, church tradition tells us there were three wise men, and it's based on the fact that there were these three gifts. Um, but Matthew doesn't really give us a number. He just says wise men from the east came, and the gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But I argue that there was another wise man, or men, 
a fourth wise fourth when these guys showed up to king herod the first thing that king herod did was he called together the chief priests and scribes now these were people who studied the sacred text they knew the stories they knew what the prophets had said and so when they were asked they shared this knowledge but we don't hear that they went to the birth we don't hear anything about them going with the Magi. So you, we have these kings from somewhere else who aren't Jewish coming looking for this new king of the Jews, and they're willing to follow a star across the country to see and to worship and to bring gifts to this new king. And the ones who have full knowledge of Scripture of what the prophets had foretold. They knew the promises of God, but didn't have enough faith in those promises to go with the wise men. Maybe they did, but Matthew doesn't tell us they did, so I'm going to assume they didn't, that they told them what the prophets said and packed up their books and scrolls and went home. So these were supposed to be wise men. They would have been the fourth wise man or men Yet they didn't go. They didn't go. So it's just kind of neat that these wise men who travel from the east, they are seekers. They have faith. Faith enough to leave the familiar, follow a star looking for the unknown. They have faith. But they couldn't quite get there without the knowledge of the scholars. And the knowledge of the scholars, they had the word of God, but they didn't have enough faith faith in those promises to go and meet this Christ child. So it's kind of interesting how we need both of these things. We need faith and willingness, and we need the knowledge. So what they witnessed when they got there was the divine revelation of God incarnate, God in human child, God come to live among us, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Now, today, there's a lot of things that are vying for our attention, saying, come follow me. Some people follow their heart. Some people like to follow their, go with their gut. Have you ever heard that phrase? It really depends on what you're looking for as to what you choose to follow. So, like... If you're wanting love and happiness, you might follow your heart. If you're wanting, you know, fame and glory, you might follow your gut. If you're looking, what you're looking for seems to maybe define the purpose of what you follow. And so, in this neck of the woods, there's also something else that you can follow. And some of you follow it as far as your bank accounts will let you. Um, it's like... BBN or something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm married to one of those. They follow the cats. <laughs> and some of you recently followed the cats to Florida, and you follow them to their championship games all across the country. You follow them, and they bring you great joy. I mean, my husband's a huge cats fan, and he loves them, and he loves following them, and he probably would travel the country to see them too if I was saying, if I said, yeah, go ahead and blow your money. But I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> but think for a minute of all these things that we choose to follow. You know, I went to school with a girl. We, we barely knew each other in high school, but later as adults, we became really good friends. And we used to go to the beach together, a bunch of big girlfriend trip to the beach, Cape May, New Jersey. And she was married for a little while, and that marriage, it kind of ended badly. And, and she had dated some, but nothing really had, had, had come to, to what we would call love, you know. So, so she was at the beach, and she met this man. He was from Oregon, so <laughs> all the way on the other side of the country, and, and they flirted with each other all week long, and he'd have dinner with us, and, and 
when we came back home, they had exchanged contact information and talked with each other in all the many ways that you can correspond these days. And at some point, she decided she's going to follow her heart. She sold her house. She quit her job. And she moved across the country to Oregon to be with this man because she thought she loved him. And, you know, he didn't love her. And a year and a half to two years later, it was just heartbreaking. She comes back home, and she has to find a place to live, and she has to find a job and rebuild a life that she was already putting together. So sometimes we follow our heart, and it leads to not good places. But I also know of people who, I know of a woman who, who grew up on the West Coast, Southern California. Life was sunny, the beach was close by, it was exciting, and she followed her heart all the way to central Kentucky for her sweetheart. And they had a lifetime together, a family, children, grandchildren, memories, friendships, a rich, wonderful life. So sometimes you can follow your heart and it takes you to some fantastic places. Yeah. I I know someone else who, who growing up thought, Wealth and power was what she wanted. She was going to be a stockbroker, so she went to school and she got the degree and she started working in that business and she was miserable, 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 miserable. She was making money, but she was not happy. And I think through the process of doing some some career counseling and things like that, she started talking about teaching somebody something and, and it seemed that that's the only time she got animated and excited. And so this career counselor goes, maybe you're in the wrong profession. And this woman, she was one of my kids' teachers. She just retired from teaching in Scott County, and she was their favorite. They loved her. She was a fantastic teacher, and kids of many generations for years and years and years loved her. And so she made a huge difference in the lives of others when she pulled back and started following something that that had a little bit more meaning to her. So, I've also known people through the years, many of my own family members, who they kind of like things the easy way, which usually makes it hard on everyone else around them. But they were for that instant gratification. And so some of the things that they followed left led them in some dark and dangerous places and kind of took a few of us with them a time or two. And so we can, we can follow things that, that aren't good, that aren't good. If you're passionate about self-indulgence, those kinds of followings, they, they lead to addiction and ruin. And uh, so, so, you know, what you follow, you must be very, very careful. You can follow things that bring you great joy and happiness, and you can follow things that bring you destruction and ruin. And sometimes you don't find out until it's too late. I've had professors throughout the years. You know, I went to school at University of Kentucky and a seminary at Lexington Theological Seminary, and so many of my professors were from all across the country and some even from other parts of the world. But yet they were so passionate about what they taught that they, they followed that profession wherever they could go and teach. And so when you're, when you're passionate about something, you can follow, follow these things and make a difference in lots of people's lives because I think some of my best professors were always the ones who were the most passionate about what they taught. But the point is, you know, we follow stuff. We do. We already do. We don't follow stars, we, but we follow things. So these wise men that studied the stars and followed them, they stepped out on faith, they were looking for one of God's miracles, and they found it in this newborn child. They found God's promises in the birth of Christ. And the ones that studied and knew all the answers, they didn't, they didn't follow, and so... I don't know. Maybe they found Christ later. Maybe they didn't. I don't know how, that, they are, how their lives ended. 
But it takes an act of stepping out on faith and trusting that God has something to reveal to you, something to share with you, something to bring some divine revelation to you. It takes stepping out on faith. So I've got some few questions for you all today. Can you consider for a moment leaving the security of everything that is familiar to you right now Step out on faith and follow a star. I mean, if the star appeared tonight, could you maybe do that? End up in Alaska, Mexico, across the ocean maybe? Could you, could you follow it that far? Could you blindly just trust that it's going to lead you to something incredible? What... And, and if you did choose to follow, what kind of divine revelations can you imagine that God would reveal to you? It's kind of hard to consider that we would do that. So we're going to do it the easy way. For those of you who came, decided to brave the cold and worship with us today, we have stars for you. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to choose a star, and our deacons are going to... Um, come forward with the, the offering plates have stars in them and they're going to take these and pass them out among you and you can take a star and on the star is written a word just one simple word and I invite you to use this as some sort of guide for you in the days and weeks ahead meditate on the star pray let it put it I have put it in your Bible maybe I have, from my time in London, my star that I got at one worship service, still in my Bible, and I have another one that is actually back in the pages back here. This one was a scary one because this star said youth, and at the time I was in seminary and I thought, no way, uh-uh. Uh uh. <laughs> Six and a half years, well, actually, close to 10 years later, because I went on to serve in Lexington in youth ministry and to come to Paris and serve in youth ministry. Over 10 wonderful years of ministry with youth. But at the time, my first semester in seminary, when I went and, no, 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 I'm not doing youth. Mm -mm. <laughs> but that's the star I got that year. And that star helped in the discernment process. So maybe you're going to pull a star out of here and you're going to look at a word and you're going to think, uh-uh. You're not allowed to put it back. <laughs> you can take another one if you like and have a couple to meditate on. But don't put it back. Consider for a moment, even if it's a word that makes you uncomfortable or makes you kind of curious as to, oh, Lord, where is this leading? Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Yeah, Diane threw a word in there for me that if I get it, it's going to be awful. <laughs> it's going to be amazing, but we'll just see what happens. But I'm going to invite the deacons to come forward right now and get the offering plates and, and send these around to everyone just as if they would if they were do, collecting the offering, and give people an opportunity to get a star. Can you guys do that, please? So we're going to give people an opportunity to take a star. If you've got a friend or someone you want to take a star to, feel free to take a star to them. Make sure our choir gets a chance and our organist. And, and uh... Oh, I didn't know you had your own collection plate, or I would have put one up there. So we'll get one of the deacons, whoever finishes first, can come up there and distribute distribute so and don't forget me I want to start too yeah you can't put it back if and thank you Leanne Frank Leanne Frank's the one that made all these stars for us that would have been a lot of work and I appreciate so much the fact that she had access to that die cut machine <laughs> so thank you Leanne but um if you get a star that is blank, that does not mean that God has nothing to say to you. That means it's a mistake, that we missed one. <laughs> so, so please, if you get a blank star that's just a human error, um, 
If you get a couple of stars that are stuck together, fine, take them both. I need one. Can I have one? Okay. You're not putting that <laughs> special <laughs> star. Ha, <laughs> Diane. <laughs> Close. You want to see it? <laughs> so in the days and weeks and months ahead, I'm inviting you guys to take this star and use it as your prayer focus or your meditation focus. Tape it to your mirror or stick it in your Bible or if you have a special place that you like to pray, keep it there. See what God has in store for you revealed in this star. I got one. Diane brought me one. Thank you. And um, if you guys want, you can dump those out or when we do the offering, we can just put the money on top of the stars. That's fine too. It doesn't matter. That's up to our treasurers what they want to deal with. L look for the beach. Is there one that says the beach in there? <laughs> I want that one too, Paula. <laughs> yeah. So, and deacons, don't forget to take yours with you too. If you've got someone, Chad, take one home to Patty. Just blindly pick one. You did? You got one. Good. She's not getting out of it. <laughs> okay. We got guys in the sound booth that didn't get stars. No, they didn't get stars. We need, you got that? Okay. While Chad's going up there to take care of them, I'll use this as your invitation to discipleship. So maybe today you're moved to follow Christ in a very special way. Maybe today you choose to make a profession of faith and enter into baptismal waters, or perhaps you've already made that decision and you choose today to make this church the church that you are going to follow Christ and be a part of. So if that's the case, I invite you at this time, or maybe you want to rededicate your life, become more connected than you have been previously. You're, you can do so at this time as we sing our hymn of invitation, there's a song in the air, number 159.